Hi there, um, my name is Emily Crompton um, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Manchester School of Architecture. My name is Laura Cousel, I'm a senior lecturer at Queen's University Belfast. Um, and we're really pleased to be able to present to you our paper, Despite Disruptions and the Resilience of the Architectural Studio Model. So in this presentation, we are going to cover the model um, that has developed during our time as year one coordinators um, at Manchester School of Architecture. So from these experiences, we are going to review the key ingredients of a successful model for Design Studio in year one. We want to highlight how the individuality and expertise of staff um, and students are central and how the design and structure of the curriculum provide a robust framework which enables students to develop a broad, creative and architectural skill set through their own interests and individuality. We'll review the opportunities and drawbacks experienced during remote delivery and speculate on the possibility of a connected model for architectural education that offers new forms of experience and richness to support the development of future architects who undoubtedly are destined to operate in a connected and global workplace. So firstly, a little overview of architectural education. Uh, undergraduate architecture uh, at Manchester is a course accredited by the professional architectural bodies, uh, and it requires the course to um, cover a number of aspects, th three in particular, humanities, technologies and studio. Um, and so we, we see humanities and technology as something that feeds into studio to develop and advance ideas. Uh, studio is then the practice of communicating design ideas and resolving design problems. Uh, it's in, first, in first year, it's critical to introduce the students to studio as an environment and as a way of working and learning, because it can be an un unfamiliar concept and underpins contemporary practice. Um, so this paper, as Emily mentioned, is a critical reflection of our collective experience in running year one uh, architecture at Manchester. Um, I am now positioned at Queen's University Belfast, um, but we, Emily and I have worked together um, over for over a decade. Uh, and we've, uh, through, throughout this time, we both started out as associate lecturers teaching uh, year one students one day a week while practicing or researching. Uh, and during our time since 2014, we've been careful to make incremental changes to an already successful model. Uh, and those have been in response to growing student numbers and diversity, as well as changing changes in PSRB requirements and institutional frameworks. Students have always been central to our concern as part of this, and the changes that we've made have been based on staff reflections and student feedback of what creates a good experience, as well as briefs that challenge students but enable our diverse cohort to produce work of a high standard. Um, Manchester has large student cohorts, uh, and there are around 200 students that join the programme each year. As you might imagine, it's necessary to take a strategic approach to organising those groups in order to manage that number. Cohorts bring together individuals from a range of backgrounds and disciplines, and each individual arrives equipped with their own unique skill set. Cohorts are typically made up of 40% international students, and this emphasises the need to recognise students as individuals um, and recognise the diversity that they bring with them into studio. We've always worked hard to ensure that group, uh, student tutor groups are made uh, up of a mix of gender and international and academic backgrounds to enable them to share skills, experience and knowledge. So with this large cohort of students comes, of course, a large staff team um, to lead their studio tutorials. So the scale of the school um, and uh, it allows for a great diversity in the staff team as well in terms of nationality, gender, as well as specialism and um, research interests. So one of the first things in coordinating year one is to identify mixed groups of students and staff into pairs. And staff pairs are usually made up of a practitioner and an academic. This gives the students direct access to practitioners um, working on live projects, as well as academic staff who are actively engaged with research. 
we find this gives the student a rounded view of the discipline. We also prioritise maintaining a 50-50 gender split with the knowledge that we have a higher proportion of female students coming in. Teaching is typically on a 1 to 12 staff to student ratio, although in order to allow more time for support in this remote setting, this was reduced to 1 to 10. Staff pairings identify a dedicated member of staff to each group, but also provide the opportunity for co-teaching, introducing students to a range of teaching styles and a broad spectrum of knowledge and approach within this broad discipline of architecture. Um, so we start the year with familiar and recognisable themes as our starting point for the briefs. And through those themes, we incrementally build up complexity throughout the year to create a learning environment where design thinking is something that's practised. So we think and we draw and we repeat. In 2014, the initial project centred around the design of a habitat for an animal. Students got to choose that animal, uh, requiring them to question the basic needs um, uh, of, of that animal and to explore how design might improve comfort and experience. As the year moved on, we asked them to imagine human clients with more specific needs and spaces. Um, and so we build uh, upon each student's lived experience around the world. Um, and we also require them to reevaluate human needs. And the site of the project is something that we use to challenge our students. Uh, some of the projects are site specific, focusing on contextual elements. Some have a choice of site and others are entirely sightless, enabling them to focus on a client or user requirements. So over the years, there's been a development in the kinds of themes um, that we have investigated, but maintained this trajectory of increasing scale and complexity for those studio projects. So the single simple space, um, the first project um, that students are um, encounter are deceptively simple. Uh, design, to design a space for a particular animal or a space for someone to listen to a particular piece of music, these all sound simple enough, but the student is challenged in having to invent. Um, there are no existing examples for that exact song um, or that exact dance. And this pushes them to investigate the problem through design to, to define the brief as well as a proposal. With a simple programme, we felt it was important um, to be to for have a familiarity for the students to have a familiarity in the programme. So this brief is a space for living all have uh, an idea and a previous experience of uh, having a home. Um, but we added the challenge in terms of the design having to be movable or having to be attached to an existing building. As the year progresses, the complexity of that program increases again. Um, and the development of this brief moved from students working on behalf of a live client for a headquarters type building to an individual starting point derived from the student themselves. They were asked to select a product from their country or their hometown, answering a universal brief of a building to make, sell and educate people about that product. There was great strength in having a starting point that came from the student. It allowed individuality to be maintained even in such a large cohort. And the development in design thinking is progressive with the more complex project allowing for decolonizing of this studio project it gave students space to consider their own culture, background and heritage, and tutors, um, it gave tutors a way of speaking about the importance of specificity in the design process and the differences in aesthetic choices. Um, so we recognise the studio space that all this takes place in as both an activity uh, and a space. Students have one day a week in studio with staff as part of a formal or directed session. Uh, which includes a range of acti activities uh, such as seminar style discussions, presentations as part of a review or tutorial and directed workshops. However, studio spaces uh, are also open spaces available for any student to work in and that creates the opportunity for year one architecture students to encounter and mix with other year groups, including the master's students. These produce chance encounters where important peer-to-peer -peer learning can take place. Um, and in that self-directed peer working environment, students have space to either work on their own laptops or at computer stations. But importantly, 
Um, it's that kind of studio space also that enables students to work in groups on models and in messy and creative activities. Uh, in short, work that can't really be replicated in the virtual context um, and is more also more difficult to do at the desk in their own accommodation. Um, so this is a typical studio space. Um, before the pandemic, we've already started the transition to digital um, context. Uh, so a typical studio space would, on the left would offer uh, space to pin up and present and discuss ideas. But since 2016, we've been doing that on screen in year one. Uh, and the use of the TV projector um, was introduced to minimize waste and printing costs for students. Um, and we also introduced digital submissions from 2018. So that meant a very smooth transition to remote delivery as students were already working in the digital medium that was already optimized for screen viewing. It was then an easy step to make to a virtual pinup space, um, which uh, we used Miro for, and that allowed us to emulate the, the physical pinup space um, and also allowed students to comment on work uh, and to have um, discussions uh, and to offer peer-to-peer -peer feedback uh, and staff feedback in um, a, a creative and collaborative environment. That was used alongside Teams or Zoom to enable discussion uh, and presentation. Um, and that's, that's an example of, of um, uh, a method of delivery that was very similar to the physical delivery. The idea of studio as an activity in space has enabled us to consider different the kinds of activities and spatial functions that happen. Uh, and it allowed us to think about how to enable those activities to happen in, in, in the virtual space. This is a snapshot of some of the more typical activities that happen during studio. They range from formal events, such as reviews, of, as I've mentioned, to the end of year exhibition um, and to day to day working. Other aspects of studio take place outside uh, of the campus and the studio itself. Um, uh, and those being things like field trips or site visits. They needed much more careful rethinking as part of a remotely delivered studio model. At Queen's, we trialled a virtual study trip, uh, which presented an opportunity to explore parts of the world we're unlikely to visit, such as Scott's Hut in the Antarctic. Um, but quite different from the experience of visiting another city or experiencing a physical building site. So our key findings from that exercise were that one of the most important aspects of studio as a space to enable peer work is to enable peer working activity. Um, attempts were made to replicate peer to peer working in, in a virtual context. Um, and that was met with varying degrees of success, depending on how well friend groups and student groups knew each other. Um, it didn't offer the opportunity for um, serendipity or chance encounter. So in examining um, what we uh, replicated online, what we revised, um, we had to amend, um, and what was completely unable to run and so got replaced, um, we started looking at this kind of um, traffic light system almost. So the things that we could re replicate and, and much of the teaching and learning activities were able um, by using online platforms. So lectures, seminars, tutorials, reviews were all made possible with a combination of Teams, Zoom and Miro. And peer-to-peer -peer discussions were also enabled by breakout room capacities. And the chat function revolutionized questions at the end of lectures. There were no more awkward uh, hands up. Reviews where um, invited guests um, were present um, were benefited from wider availability. Um, and uh, there was an increased uptake in enthusiasm from practitioners. At MSA, we took the opportunity to reconnect back with some of our graduates who were working internationally, who would not otherwise have been able to join. In revising some of those activities, things such as workshops and group work were still possible using Teams and Zoom, and there were many rigged up cameras um, in tutors' offices to, to demonstrate skills through 2020. 
As we moved into 2021, we maintained some of the delivery methods, especially lectures where questions were easier, engagement was maintained. So for skills based sessions, we now broadcast lectures online to groups in the same physical space with a tutor press for queries. And of course, as Laura has mentioned, there were some parts of the course which just had to be completely reimagined. Just um, as she was saying, for study trips, it wasn't possible to have those large groups touring around European, European cities as we normally would. So virtual maps of Manchester and encouraging students to look at the city through new lens and new eyes um, were developed. There were also opportunities to widen that experience, to explore places you might not, not have been able to afford to travel to. The end of the year exhibition had none of that warm wine or bumping into old colleagues, but the digital web based show certainly increased the reach of the work. So in this paper, we've discussed the evolution of our design studio module, noting in particular how the model itself was robust enough um, to, to withstand significant change in circumstance, which not only impacted an existing cohort and had to change very quickly, but also an incoming year group in the 2021 cohort. We feel that the model developed at Manchester demonstrated a huge amount of resilience to the challenge of the pandemic. And while other years in the school dramatically changed the format of the year, timing or submissions, year one maintained the structure and outputs, opting to maintain hand drawing in term one, digital drawing in term two. And the elements which have aided that were the student ownership and individuality in projects, investigating universal experiences, an incremental complexity across the project, and adjusted group sizes, um, but maintaining that diversity of staff as well as having an existing framework for digital pinup and review and experience of digital submissions within the staff and the student team. So moving forward, what we've learned from all of this and where we'll go next, um, the pandemic and notably the abrupt shift in teaching created by lockdown gave us this opportunity to critically reflect on our experience of, of teaching and coordinating year one architecture at Manchester School of Architecture. We believe that a connected approach in future can allow students to have the memorable experience they expect in their first year at university, in particular their first year at architecture school, re-evaluating spatial requirements and quality. This year we've been developing a new year zero, a foundation um, to the BA, and we've been thinking particularly about the irreplaceable experience based activities such as having sensory experiences of buildings and the city, you know, including elements such as scale and climate. Through study trips, practice visits, construction site visits, as well as peer-to-peer -peer engagement, which is all the better in person. We're aiming to take the best of both worlds and capitalise on those opportunities we've explored over the past few years. And at Queen's, um, <clears throat> we've been building on our experiences over lockdown. Um, and have been successful in securing funding to test out co-teaching across international contexts. So we'll be bringing together undergraduate architecture students at the American University in Cairo with master's students at Queen's University in Belfast to explore how we might decarbonise heritage uh, and historic buildings uh, at a range of scales from the building to the city uh, and landscape. Working across time zones and organising activity around different academic calendars has presented some challenges um, and we've been installing uh, and acquiring hardware in order to equip teaching spaces with more sophisticated cameras and conferencing facilities to enable a smooth connection for co-teaching and reviews. This all recognises the importance um, also recognises the importance of sensory experiences and the opportunity to meet in person, uh, as well as to make visits to sites. Um, and so part of this project is designed around focused two week study trips um, in each semester, which will involve workshops um, and excursions. Um, uh, and our first trip will be to Cairo during November 2022, where students will be directly involved in workshops at COP27. So this creates a context for online and peer-to-peer -peer engagement with emphasis on making the most of located activity. Um, and we hope that this model 
will create a connected international studio context which reflects the diversity and reach of staff and student body. So in conclusion, we recognize that making memories and sharing experience is key to delivering successful architecture program and to student learning and knowledge acquisition, but also ensuring that these have resilience is key to being able to maintain this experience in the event of disruption. We recognize there are some elements of architectural education much more difficult to replicate in a virtual environment than others. However, we've also found that a forced move to complete but temporary remote delivery has enabled us to broaden and strengthen many aspects of the programme that uh, are relevant in a growing network professional context. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.